Hi, I'm Logan with NAS, and today I'm going to talk to you about the capabilities of the SolArc PowerView site, as well as the advantages of sharing access to your system with NAS. Here at NAS, we specialize in complete system design and integration, and we offer tech support and troubleshooting for the entire life of your system. When you share access to your system with us here at NAS on the SolArc PowerView site, it enables us to access and program and monitor the system remotely. This is an extremely powerful and useful tool that can really cut down on the commissioning process on a new installation and also is very helpful in terms of troubleshooting should you run into any issues down the road. Let's take a look at how this works. The SolArc PowerView site serves as the link between your physical SolArc installation and the internet. This is available as a web browser called PowerView, and it's also available as a mobile app for a smartphone called PV Pro. Either one of these programs do the same thing, and there's no subscription charge or service fee to use these. One of the requirements to utilize the PowerView site is that your SolArc's Wi-Fi dongle is connected to the internet. If you need assistance connecting your new solar converter to the internet, please take a look at our other video where I walk you through that process step by step. The PowerView site allows the end user to see their solar system remotely from anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Whether you're at work for eight hours or you're on vacation for eight months, you can log into your system remotely, see everything that's going on, see how it's been performing and diagnose any errors or faults. Uh, you can also use the PowerView site to share access with other owners of your system or installers or technicians who may need to resolve issues for you remotely as well. Another very useful aspect of PowerView as an installer, you can have multiple sites or installations linked to a single PowerView account so you can see all of your systems operating in real time and, and have access to them. Connecting your SolArc system on PowerView greatly reduces the amount of time spent troubleshooting as we can see exactly what's going on with your system in real time and make necessary changes or adjustments. Sometimes it's easier for us to take control directly and make those changes rather than instructing somebody on site through these settings or adjustments individually. Again, here at NAS, we really pride ourselves in offering tech support and troubleshooting for the entire life of your system. Now that we know a little bit more about what the PowerView site actually is, let's see what this program can do. Now this can be done on a web browser, on a laptop or a computer, or on a smartphone, tablet, mobile device. So today I'm gonna to show you the, the program PowerView on a laptop using a web browser. So the first step here is to go to the PowerView site, which is www.mysoul-arc.com. And at this point, you've already created a login for, for PowerView. Uh, you have got your SolArc uh, connected to the internet. So here, go ahead and punch in your email address, punch in your password, and uh, hit login. And so now this is going to take you to the main screen of the PowerView site. Um, in my case here, I have multiple customers uh, who have provided me access to their system. So you can see there's uh, multiple plants or installations showing up in the plant list. Um, if you have made an account on PowerView, connected your SolArc to the internet, uh, you may only see one plant or installation there and that would be your system. Uh, so in this case, we're going to look at one of my colleague's systems at his home. Uh, he has a SolArc 12K inverter. So the first thing is when you click on the plant or installation, it's gonna take you to the overview screen. Okay, so this is just a very quick um, kind of glance at everything that's going on in real time. Uh, here we can see the solar production, our installed uh, array capacity. It's giving you a couple of totals, um, daily energy generated, monthly energy generated over here on the right. Uh, scrolling down a little bit, they give you this cool power flow graphic. So this is, um, is kind of neat to see. You can kind of see all the where the electricity is flowing in real time. So at this instant here uh, on this particular system, we're getting about 1300 watts of solar. Some of that's going into the batteries to charge them. And then the rest of that power is going into the house to run the loads. Uh, grid is showing up at zero watts. So we're not actually using or 
exporting uh, any power from or to the grid. Um, further down below here, a couple more summaries. You can see um, at a quick glance if there's any warnings or faults that the system's logged. Uh, a summary as to how much energy consumption uh, export to the grid and charging has occurred. occurred. Over here, uh, this will populate if you do have some sort of a warning or a fault in your plant. And then all the way down at the very bottom is a graphic that I kind of like to look at quite a bit. So <clears throat> this is the energy generation summary. And now this is gonna show you all of the different uh, aspects of your system over time and how they relate to one another. So you can see here we've got uh, PV, we've got battery, battery state of charge, load, and grid. Now what's cool on this part here is you can actually click on and off certain parameters if you don't want to view those in comparison to the other. Uh, so you can kind of notice clicking on and off a couple of these things here changes the, um, the data or the colors that we see on the graph there. So uh, what we're showing here at this moment is uh, what has been happening so far today. Uh, you can actually look on it, you can actually look at it on a monthly scale and see monthly totals there. You can look at it as well on a yearly scale and kind of see some of the annual data as well. Uh, so here you can see if you, if you scroll your mouse along the data lines here, it'll actually show you uh, at a specific moment or an instance when the solar grabbed all of this information what all of the different parameters were showing at once. So here in this case on this system that we're looking at now, um, uh, right around here it's five in the morning so we don't have any solar production coming in at all. Uh, essentially the grid is just being passed through to feed the loads directly. We're not really discharging the batteries either, we're just keeping those at about 20% state of charge. And then you can see earlier, or then you can see later on in the morning, maybe around six o'clock or so, uh, we see the PV production start kicking in. Um, still not enough PV to really do any meaningful charging at this point. Um, but uh, once the sun um, comes up a little higher and, and, and we get more exposure on the panels, we can see the PV, which is this green chunk here, uh, really starting to take off and then um, let's see where are we about nine or so in the morning today now we're actually producing enough PV to get the batteries charged and we can see the SOC is slowly climbing. All right so that's mostly everything on the overview page here uh, we're going to move on to the equipment section now so up at the top of the screen there you'll see the tab that says equipment you can go ahead and select that um, now to access the settings for the solar converter remotely, um, it's not the most obvious, but once you have the equipment tab selected and uh, assuming you're logged into your own system or if you're viewing somebody else's system, you'd have to be added as a manager to see this. But uh, right here on the screen um, over towards the right side, right under where it says add gateway, you'll see these three little horizontal dots. So if you click on that, a uh, drop-down menu appears, and there you can select Parameters Setting. Okay, so selecting Parameter Setting, now this takes us to the different settings um, that we can change and adjust remotely. Um, this one here isn't my system, so I'm not gonna make any changes right now, and uh, nor would Nas make any changes to your system unless we had that permission, but you can just kinda see here the different uh, settings that are available. Here you change battery settings, um, system work mode kind of controls the um, operating mode of the system. You can program all your time of use data in here, uh, different time slots and how you want the inverter to treat the batteries. Uh, going back to settings, you can look at the grid settings. Um, this is mostly relevant, I would say, for uh, systems that are gonna be exporting to the grid. Um, you can go in here and, and change things to match with uh, what your utility might recommend for interconnection. Uh, we'll go back out again. There's a whole tab for the smart load setting uh, on the solar converter you can configure. We've got some basic settings here. I, these all just have to do with user preference stuff, how the alarms work, how the screen brightness, timeout settings and things like that. And then uh, the last uh, group of settings you can view on PowerView is going to be the advanced settings. And here you have things like uh, peak shaving, 
Um, if you have a multiple inverter system, uh, you can configure the, the, the master-slave relationship on this page. And that is about it for the different settings. <clears throat> so again, not making any changes today, just kind of showing you what's, what's available and where to find those, uh, those settings. It, it is a little tricky again. Um, so we'll go back to the equipment tab. And this is just more detailed information than what the initial overview page shows us. So most of what um, I look at on this page is gonna be over to the right side of the screen where we've got these different tabs here, output, input, battery, grid, load, and more. So <clears throat> you can play around with these. Um, the output tab is essentially what the inverter's outputting to your loads or to the grid. Um, the input tab is what is coming in from the solar array. The battery tab has to do with the battery, so you can see your, your state of charge, whether they're charging or discharging, some totals for the day or month in terms of energy. Moving on towards the right, you've got the grid tab. Um, again, the system we're looking at now is, is kind of a grid zero system, so there's not a whole lot to see under the grid tab, but uh, certain applications, you, you would have some more data populated there. Um, the next one is the load tab. This is gonna show us what the loads connected to the system are consuming. And then uh, this one I think is maybe the most interesting under more. So I'll come back to that one in a second, but under each one of these tabs, essentially, if we go back to the first one under output, uh, you can see sort of the, the general um, state of the system or current values that it's recording, uh, along with some net totals at the top here in terms of um, daily, monthly, or energy generation and your total generation for the life of the system. But below those figures, you can see there's a, there's a graph. So this is kind of a neat tool that we can play around with, um, similar to what we saw on the overview page, right? So you can select here different parameters. And again, this has to do with the output of the system. So in this case, it's what the inverter is sending out to the loads. You can view the uh, current voltage frequency, temperature, and then again down here, narrow it down to a daily, monthly, or a yearly scale, or you could even look at it as a, as a total scale for the entire life of the system. And then this one I think is maybe the most interesting. So if we go to more, uh, here's where you can really get custom and, and specific in terms of what data you wanna see and how that's displayed. So in this case under more, we've got the date selected to today, and then you can go over to parameter. And here, this is really cool because you can manually select individual parameters that you wanna see on this chart. So if you were trying to troubleshoot an issue and, and let's say, um, I don't know, maybe the system was, was using more grid power than you expected it to, you know, you can come on here and see uh, what, what power we uh, used from the grid, how much we imported, uh, what the voltage from the grid was coming in at. You hit confirm and then that's going to grab all those parameters and show it to you in this graph here. So. Similar to the overview page, shows you all the different uh, colored lines there on the chart. And then mousing over on the graph, you can see all of those parameters uh, sort of stacked on top of each other, showing you what the SolarC recorded at that instant in relation to the, all, all the other parameters. And then just like on the overview page, it's the same idea. Here at the bottom, you can click on and off the different parameters or values and uh, that will in turn take stuff off or repopulate uh, with more data on that graph. So the, the more tab here under the equipment section in PowerView, very, very useful if you wanna look at this on sort of a micro scale or um, you know, you're troubleshooting a very specific issue and you wanna only look at specific things to, to help resolve it or diagnose what's happening. Now that we've walked through the equipment section and power view a little bit, uh, really the last thing to show you here on the site is the event tab. Um, so that's again up top, right next to overview and equipment, you can click event. And this is gonna show you what faults or events or warnings uh, the inverter has logged over time. Um, in this case, there's nothing really to see at the moment, um, but you can actually play around with these a little bit. Um, so in this case, we'll look at all um, both warnings and faults. 
you can kind of select the date range too manually or using one of the uh, already populated ranges over to the left there. So we'll click on last 30 days, for example, and in this case, uh, it did register a fault, it looks like back in July, an AC overload fault. So um, again, this page under event is really just allowing you to look back at previous warnings or faults, uh, seeing what happened and, and when exactly that event occurred in your system. One of the biggest advantages in purchasing a complete solar system from us here at NAS is that we offer ongoing troubleshooting tech support for the entire life of your system. The Solark PowerView site is an extremely useful tool that lets us monitor your system's performance remotely and troubleshoot any issues should you run into problems down the road. Take a look at our YouTube channel for other videos and check out the Learning Center on our website for more information. If you have any questions about Solar Converters, the PowerView site, or if you need assistance designing a system of your own, give us a call or send us an email and we'll be happy to help. Thank you for watching.